What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. Now in today's video, we're going to be going over TOEFL integrated writing. Now for the integrated writing question, you're going to first have to read a passage like this. As you can see, it's an entire essay. It's not just one paragraph. Now the reading passages structure is always going to be the same. All right. So it's going to have an introduction paragraph and three following body paragraphs. Now, you're going to have three minutes to read this passage before the lecture begins. Now, it's going to be very, very important for all of you guys to read the passage really thoroughly and take complete notes, okay? Take notes, not copy the sentences. Take notes, please. Paraphrase the sentences that you see. All right, now, when you're looking at the introduction paragraph of the reading passage, what I want you guys to do is read it from the bottom up, okay? So read it from the third, the last sentence. So let's look at this part here. Neanderthals, many have arrived at the conclusion that Neanderthals were in fact able to speak. All right, what is this? This is the reading's opinion. That's why we read from the bottom up. The last sentence of the reading passage's introduction is most likely gonna have the reading's opinion. Now, once you know the reading's opinion, you automatically know the listening's opinion and also the topic, okay? So the topic for this question is whether or not Neanderthals were able to speak. The reading's opinion is they were able to speak. On the other hand, the lecturer's opinion is no, Neanderthals were not able to speak. Okay, now let's look at the first body paragraph. When you're reading the body paragraphs, all you have to look for are two things. The first is the reason and the second is the major detail, the most important detail. Okay. Uh, by examining a number of fossilized remains, anthropologists have determined that Neanderthals had large brains. Okay, here's the reason. Neanderthals had large brains. As a matter of fact, Neanderthals had a cranial capacity about 10% larger than modern humans have. There's the detail. How kind. So in this situation, the first body paragraph gave us the reason and the major detail um, right next to each other in the second, in the first and second sentences. So that was very nice of them. All right, let's paraphrase this really quickly. First reason, reading Neanderthals had large brains because their cranial capacity was about 10% larger than that of modern humans. That's the first reasons. Re, that's the first body. That's the first body paragraphs. Reason and major detail. Okay, I'm done taking notes. All right, let's look at the second body. Slightly over 20 years ago, a hyoid bone belonging to a Neanderthal was found. The hyoid bone connects the muscles between the larynx and the tongue. This bone enables its possessor to move its tongue in a number, in a large number of different ways. Okay, here's the first, here's the second reason. A hyoid bone belonging to a Neanderthal was found. Okay, so the second reason is Neanderthals possessed a hyoid bone or hyoid bones. Now we're going to skip the second sentence and focus on the third sentence. This is the major detail. Okay. Now the hyoid bone enables uh, people or its possessor to move the tongue in a large number of different ways and create speech. Okay. So I'm going to paraphrase the second reason and major detail. Neanderthals possessed hyoid bones, which allow its possessor to move the tongue in many different ways and thus create speech. That's the second reason and major, and major detail. All right, let's move on to the third body. In addition, researchers have determined that Neanderthals developed various muscles in their stomach regions. These muscles not only permitted them to control their breathing, but also helped them create the sounds necessary for speech. Okay, so I believe that the third reason and major detail revealed themselves to us just now. Let me paraphrase. Neanderthals had developed muscles in their stomach regions, which not only enabled them to control their breathing, but also assisted them when creating the sounds necessary for speech. There we go, guys. That's that's pretty much what I'm going to write from the reading passage, okay? Now, I'm sure that this entire process took a little bit more than three minutes, but that's because I was kind of explaining it to you guys, reading the sentences a multiple, or multiple times, and having to paraphrase. 
So I did a lot of other things that I probably would not do when I'm actually at the real test and solving the problem. So it took a little more than three minutes, but that's basically what you're aiming to do while you're reading the passage for three minutes, okay? Now, as you can see, I have everything that the reading had to say organized in complete sentences, okay? So the opinion, three reasons, and major details are completely organized in my notes, all right? Now, this means that I have 50% of the integrated essay organized already, although I didn't type a single word. Now, that's because roughly half of your integrated essay is going to be composed of the reading's opinion and details. You understand? The integrated essay is a puzzle with two pieces, one being the reading's information and the other being the lecturer's information, okay? Now, the glue that you're going to be using to connect those two pieces will be my integrated writing template, okay? Now, I'm going to be showing you guys that a little bit later. Now, since we're done taking notes for the reading passage, let's listen to the lecture. All right, guys, I'm going to turn on the lecture in just a moment, but I want you guys to first take out a piece of paper or your notebook and a writing utensil so that you can take advantage of this opportunity to practice taking notes. Okay, here's the lecture. Now listen to a lecture on the topic you read about. Now, there are many controversies in the field of anthropology, and one of the biggest is over Neanderthals. Some anthropologists allege that Neanderthals actually had the ability to speak. Ludicrous, I say. I believe they couldn't be more wrong in their analysis. Please let me give you the reasons I feel that way. A lot has been made about the fact that Neanderthals had large brains. In fact, they had brains which were somewhat larger than ours. But remember, the size of the brain isn't the most important aspect. Its complexity is more important. And simply put, Neanderthals did not have the complex brains necessary to enable them to, uh, speak. Here's something else. Your book mentioned the finding of the hyoid bone in some Neanderthal remains. Okay, yes, the hyoid bone does permit the tongue to have a much wider range of movement. However, that alone does not guarantee that they would have been able to speak. Why do I say this? Well, several species of monkeys also have that exact same bone, yet they aren't able to speak at all. Finally, again, I will concede that Neanderthals had highly developed stomach muscles. That much is true. But, on the other hand, these muscles do not just affect one's speech production. Basically, they are integral to a person's, uh, Neanderthal's, ability to control his or her breathing. Remember, the Neanderthals lived in harsh climates and had harder lives than we do today. They could have used these muscles to enable them to travel long distances quickly, or even to climb mountains more easily. We shouldn't just assume that because Neanderthals possessed some of the necessities for speech, they were able to engage in it. All right. That was the lecture. Now, let me go over what I wrote down on the board. Now, it's going to be really important for you guys to start paying attention as soon as the lecture begins, because in the beginning part of the lecture, the professor always mentions his or her opinion. Now, the opinion of the professor's lecture started from the word ludicrous because ludicrous means crazy or nonsensical, okay? It means that it doesn't make sense. All right, so the lecturer's opinion was that the notion that Neanderthals can speak or could speak is ludicrous because anthropologists could not be more wrong in their analysis, okay? So this sentence is so much better than just writing, nope, Neanderthals could not speak, okay? So please take good notes on the lecturer's opinion. All right, let's look at the first argument. Size of B circle. What do you think B circle means? Brain. Size of brain, X most important because complex more important. X have complex enough brains enable to speak. All right, now I'm going to 
organize this argument, this piece of information, this uh, note-taking portion right here in complete sentences. Okay, so the first argument is, the size of the brain isn't the most important aspect when it comes to speech production because complexity is much more important. However, Neanderthals did not have complex enough brains that enabled them to speak. So the first argument was fairly short. Now, the lecture for this um, question is on the easier side of things because I think it's one of the practice questions. So the level of difficulty for this lecture isn't going to be the same as the level of difficulty you would encounter in the real test. So just make, make a mental note and don't forget that this question is going to be a little bit easier than the real test questions. Okay. All right. But anyways, that's the first argument. Okay. Now the second argument, H circle, you, you see the word bone next to H circle, right? So what do you think the H means? Hyoid. We already saw and read, wrote that down from the reading passage. Hyoid bone range of movement, but not guarantee could speak because monkeys also have H circle and X speak. So once again, here's the complete sentence. Uh, here are the complete sentences for the second argument. The hyoid bone permits the tongue to have a large range of movement, but it alone does not guarantee that Neanderthals could speak. This is simply because many species of monkeys also have the hyoid bone, yet they are not able to speak. All right, so that's the second argument. Now let's take a look at the third argument. X just affect speech production because integ integ integral, integral means important, because integral to the ability to control breathing had harsher lives used to travel long distances and climb mountains. Okay, so here are the complete sentences for the last argument. Stomach muscles don't just affect speech production because they are integral to the ability to control breathing, one's breathing. Neanderthals had much harsher lives than we do, so they most likely used their stomach muscles to travel long distances and climb mountains more quickly. Okay, guys, now, we organized, we just finished organized, organizing the reading passages information and the listening's information. So now we should be able to get a perfect grade on this question, okay? Now, that's the writing template. That's the integrated writing template that I personally created about eight or nine years ago when I first started teaching the TOEFL. And this template has allowed hundreds of my previous students to get excellent scores on the TOEFL section. All you have to do is now plug in the correct information in the correct blinks. That's all you need to do. R stands for reading and L stands for lecture. Okay. So what I want you guys to do uh, now is type this essay. Okay. And try timing yourself. Try to not exceed 20 minutes. All right. Now, when you're done typing your essay, I want you guys to first stop the stopwatch, okay? Stop and see how many minutes it took. If it took 19 minutes for you to finish typing the essay, good job, congratulations, but that's still not good enough. Why? That's because in the real test, you need to have at least three or four minutes when you're done typing the essay to read your essay one more time and proofread, okay? Because you're, you're, it's inevitable that you made some grammar mistakes or typing mistakes, all right? So you need to have at least three or four minutes when you're done typing the essay to proofread and make sure that there are no unnecessary and silly mistakes. Okay, guys, if you have any questions about the uh, integrated writing template that I just uh, showed you, um, please leave those questions in the comment section below or, or send me a personal email. Um, please check out the descriptions box because I am actually offering a lot of different services at the moment. Um, and I feel like some of you guys didn't click the link to check out what those services exactly are. Um, the services that I'm providing to all of all people who are willing, who want it are number one, proofreading and correction services. Number two would be one-on-one -on -one Skype tutoring sessions. And number three could be specified, specified and, uh, individualized 
video, okay? So content that is specific to um, my patrons, understand? Okay, so if you uh, like what I just shared with you and you follow everything that I just mentioned, check the description box below. And if you're interested, send me an email or you know follow the, follow the um, instructions, directions that are on that website. And uh, hopefully we can start interacting with each other more and hopefully we can find ways to help each other get better, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. And in tomorrow's video, we're probably gonna be covering independent writing. I will see you guys next time.